In today's video, I'll show you how to calculate the amount of cargo that can be loaded in each ship's cargo hold. Ships nowadays are equipped with advanced loading software to determine cargo load distribution, but understanding the fundamentals of manual calculation provides a solid foundation. Knowing these principles not only boosts your confidence in verifying loading software outputs, but also strengthens your ability to make informed decisions when planning and adjusting cargo loads. Let's break down the essential steps and principles behind cargo calculations starting from our scenario. According to the voyage instructions, we'll prepare the stowage plan based on the following data. The cargo to be loaded is coal, with a quantity of 30,000 metric tons, plus or minus 10% MOLOO. It stands for more or less owner's option, which means the charterer gives the owner, or the captain as the owner's representative, the flexibility to load between 27,000 and 33,000 metric tons as acceptable cargo limits considering the safety of the ship. The loading and discharging ports have no draft restrictions. Let's assume that based on the load line zones, the ship's entire voyage will remain within the summer zone, this will be our initial scenario. In the next scenario, we'll consider that the loading port is in the summer zone, while the discharging port falls within the winter zone. Our ship is a bulk carrier, which is composed of five cargo holds. Cargo holds number one, two, three, four, and five. To determine the maximum amount of cargo to be loaded for each cargo hold, we need the hold capacity table. This table are provided by the ship builder for every ship, which can be found in the ship's loading plan or stability booklet. First, we need to take the volume of each hold. The volumes are given in cubic meter and cubic feet, which is in grain and bale capacity. Grain capacity refers to the total volume of a ship's hold, measured without considering obstructions like frames or beams. It represents the maximum space available when loading bulk cargo, such as grains or other free-flowing bulk materials, which can fill in around structural features of the hold. Grain capacity is generally larger because the cargo fills the entire volume. Bale capacity measures the usable volume of the hold, taking into account structural obstructions like beams, frames, and other fittings. It is typically used for packaged or unitized cargo, like bales of cotton, which don't fill all available gaps. It's slightly smaller than grain capacity because it accounts for the space lost to these structural features. So grain capacity is for bulk cargo that can flow around obstructions, while bale capacity is for general or unitized cargo, where obstructions reduce usable space. In our scenario, the cargo is coal in bulk, so we will be using the grain capacity. Next, we need the stowage factor of the cargo to be loaded. Stowage factor is a measurement used to indicate how much space a particular type of cargo occupies in a ship's hold. It is usually expressed in terms of cubic feet per metric ton, or cubic meters per metric ton. The stowage factor varies depending on the cargo's density, moisture content, and how tightly it can be packed. Ship officers can determine the stowage factor of cargo to be loaded by referencing standard sources, consulting with the shipper, or testing the cargo. In many cases, cargo surveyors measure the stowage factor of the cargo prior to loading. They take samples, check for moisture content, and assess compaction rates to determine an accurate stowage factor. Let's assume that the given stowage factor for coal is 1.40 cubic meters per metric ton. To determine the hold capacity in metric tons, it is equal to the volume of the cargo hold which is in cubic meters, divided by the stowage factor of the cargo in cubic meters per metric tons. In finding the volume for each cargo hold, it should be the total volume, which includes the volume of cargo hold and cargo hatch. Since the unit of our stowage factor is in cubic meters per metric ton, the volume that we will extract from the table will be in cubic meters. For cargo hold number one, the total volume is 
5,061.18 cubic meters. Cargo hold number 2 has a total volume of 8,966.70 cubic meters. Hold number 3 has a volume of 8,965.19 cubic meters. Hold number 4 has the same volume as hold number 3. And cargo hold number 5 has a total volume of 8,364.83 cubic meters. Since we have already taken the volume of each cargo hold from the hold capacity table, let's calculate the maximum cargo that can be loaded for each hold using this formula. And these are the following results. For cargo hold number 1, the full capacity is 3,615.13 metric tons. Cargo hold number 2 can load 6,404.79 metric tons. Hold number 3 and 4 has the same capacity, 6,403.71 metric tons. And hold number 5 has the capacity of 5,974.88 metric tons. The maximum coal cargo that can be loaded to all cargo holds based on the given stowage factor is 28,802.22 metric tons. And the total volume of all cargo holds is 40,323.09 cubic meters. To verify if the total amount of cargo can be carried by the ship in compliance with load line restrictions, we'll calculate the maximum allowable cargo based on the ship's summer displacement, as the entire voyage falls within the summer zone. Extract the ship's summer displacement, so as with the deadweight when she is floating at her summer draft. You can find this table in the ship's plan, or in the ship's general particulars. By subtracting the lightweight to summer displacement, the difference is, deadweight. Let's assume that these are our deductibles, or non-cargos, fuel oil, diesel oil, lubricating oil, unpumped ballast, and fresh water. Subtracting our non-cargos, the difference is, cargo and constant. By subtracting the constant, we can find the maximum cargo that a ship can carry when she is floating at her summer draft. In this scenario, let's assume that the ship is loading in salt water. Density correction is not necessary. We can determine the actual constant of the ship during initial draft survey. Looking at the full capacity of our cargo hold and the maximum cargo that a ship can load at her summer draft. We can carry this total amount of cargo in compliance with the load line restrictions. As to the voyage instructions, we have also complied the stated amount of cargo to be loaded, considering the plus or minus 10% of 30,000 metric tons of coal. The next scenario that I mentioned earlier, in which the ship will be loading in the summer zone and she will discharge in the winter zone, will be discussed in part 2 of this video, including the cargo sequence. That's all for now, I hope you found this video helpful, thank you for watching, bye.